If you are a Christian and you are not pursuing justice and you're pushing back on this movement and you're pushing back in this moment of history, I'm not for the left or for the right. I'm not here with a political agenda and I'm not here to put my trust in men at all. So therefore, this is not where I'm speaking from. This is not a political mandate issue. This is a kingdom issue. And so when you avoid this conversation and stay silent, when you push back and th say things like all lives matter, and when right now more than 12 million people are being persecuted because of the color of their skin, dare I say, my friend, Christ follower, you have missed the point, my friend. And I have to be very serious with that because we ought to approach this issue with fear and trembling because God is watching us. God is watching us. Yes, God is watching. And, you know, I just got to welcome you all to the Evangelical Dark Web. My name is Ray. Comment below if you know who these 12 million people are that she speaks of being persecuted, definitely let me know about that. And don't forget to like this video because early likes really vault a video up into the YouTube magical algorithms that we all love and are controlled by. So the topic for today's video, uh, you got a little sneak peek about it already. What this is about it is basically about how the North American Mission Board is funding obviously woke churches like that and that is what we're going to talk about today now credit for this story is you know where it's due this story comes from woke preacher clips uh capstone report and tom buck those are the three sources for this story so this is uh tom buck who basically tweeted this information i'm i believe this was after um Woke Preacher Clips tweeted this out, tweeted their video out that, you know, was at the beginning of this video. So basically, we got a church planted by NAM, North American Mission Board of the Southern Baptist Convention, has a woman pastor, which is against the Southern Baptist Convention rules. Um, everybody who's a Southern Baptist should know this, and everyone who's a Baptist should know this as well, because Baptists believe in complementarianism or patriarchy, whichever term you prefer, and they always have. Uh, so they've been receiving cooperative program dollars. They were also founded in part with the SEND network. As we can see, the North American Mission Board here takes credit for um, Center Set Church uh, and on their website, and we'll visit their website more later. And this is another... Um, instance where the North American Mission Board is taking credit for this church plan. Uh, if we go down below, uh, Yasmin Ruhi, who I guess is the wife of the lead pastor, Ali Ruhi, is the lead pa is listed as a lead pastor at Center Set Church on LinkedIn. Um, you can uh, you can see that now. I believe the story of this church is that uh, the lead pastor of this church, Ali, uh, was a Muslim. So this guy over here was a Muslim. And I guess they were married, so maybe she was a Muslim also. But then he was an atheist, and then he supposedly met Christ, and then he decided to plant a church. So... You're following my uh, order of operations here. But what's odd is you think that someone who was formerly a Muslim would be more strict along the uh, complementarian lines, even more legalistically so. Uh, so that's definitely a possibility, but obviously that's not the case with this particular church plant. So let's go back to their website. And their website, to me, just has a lot of red flags. Obviously, the the egalitarianism is a huge red flag that is a huge red flag because with egalitarianism comes all that critical race theory that you saw at the beginning of the video so let's also check out oh wait well that's the visitor guide so here's the visitor guide for their church i just wanted you to see this inspiring messages 
For those new to church, think of this as a short 30-minute TED Talk, but with Jesus as our focus. The messages at our church are not meant to make you feel guilty or shame. They are meant to give you a new perspective on life and faith. Pastor Ali and Pastor Yasmin remind us of a reality where faith and everyday life come together in a way where our actions and decisions are all based centered on Jesus because he is our source of hope and joy. So, sermons are like TED Talks? Really? Really? A sermon is like a TED Talk. Can you think of anything that's wrong with that analogy? Now, this is this is a church in San Jose, California. And if in case you're less familiar with that, Silicon Valley, where all the tech companies are at, this is where this church is located, Silicon Valley. So TED Talks, I guess, are very popular over there, even though TED Talks are pretty anti-intellectual. Let's be honest. They're not as... Like, they're cool when you're a freshman in college, but after that, you kind of, you know, I've seen the good ones. And basically, that's it. Uh, So the fact that they view sermons as TED Talks? Eh, Wrong order there. Wrong order. But maybe I'm going off on a tangent. But honestly, I wouldn't go to this church. But there's many reasons for that. Now, if we look over here... You know, we see the story of uh, Pastor Ali being a Muslim, then an atheist, then a Christian all of a sudden. Uh, not very, uh, the not the most well-developed faith statement. Love this world. I don't think that's what we're called to do as Christians. Uh, boilerplate, bare bones faith statement here. Uh, interestingly enough, cons- okay, we got God inspired and a source of strength, direction, and wisdom to those who apply it to their lives. Okay, so they also they have a weak statement on the authority and uh, God inspired isn't necessarily synonymous with inerrant with the way people want to twist words these days. So they really should specify that. But other than that, that might be a nitpick. But obviously a very bare bones faith statement, not a whole lot of core beliefs of this church. Very much a let's be like the world kind of church, and that's why you have a lady pastor. This this isn't a Baptist church. And I think, yeah, it's not a Baptist church, and I think that's kind of very obvious. But why was the North American Mission Board sending money to this church? The, the answer to that question is less obvious, but I, I think a few things factor in. One, the Southern Baptist Convention, and let me pull up my own data here, um, they don't have many churches in the area. I did a search. This is San Jose, California, clearly lacking. And as you can see, Center Set Church is not listed on the website for the North American Mission Board. Uh, So, this seems a little counterintuitive, but True Hope Community Church is the same church as Center Set Church. That is an address match that I was able to see on their website. As you can see, uh, 400, is that L. L. Lewin Avenue, Campbell, California. I know I've said that they exist in San Jose, but as you can see, very much the same area. And I'm not uh, someone who lives in California, so don't hold me to that standard. But uh, as you can see, they were listed as True Hope Community Church. And if we click on that, do we get any more? Okay, we just get the uh, address, uh, which is the same address. And we get a dead link. Oh, wait, wait, it's, we got to redirect. Nope. Um, so as you can see, same address and this is a dead website link. So they are, they are indeed a Southern Baptist 
church. Just had to do a quick edit here because I double checked that after recording. And this is the good, in, the most innocent and gracious explanation is that they're so desperate to have a church plant in an area that's very unchurched that they are willing to fund a church that they have no business funding, a church that doesn't align with the beliefs of Southern Baptists, a church that opposes the beliefs of the Southern Baptists. And they're willing to give the money of the Southern Baptists to a church that does not adhere to the beliefs of Southern Baptist Convention. You know, if, if you're any sort of uh, stickler for ethics, you'd have a problem with this. Where's the oversight here? But Kevin Azeal is the phantom menace of the Southern Baptist Convention. Oversight is not in his vocabulary unless he's trying to assert authority over state conventions or local conventions. That's the only time he cares about oversight. He is the phantom menace of the Southern Baptist world. You know, it's not Al Mohler, it's not Ed Litton, it's not even Danny Aiken. The big bad is Kevin Ezel, and this is part of his influence, funding churches like this. And Tom Buck was calling for his resignation on the Twitter sphere, and I completely agree with Tom Buck that he needs to resign. And this was uh, a tweet of a North American Mission Board Twitter account, uh, they are championing this church plant at Center Set Church. They are championing this. How many more red flags, lack of oversight, and Decenter.com, which is Reformation Charlotte, which is a source I should have given credit to earlier in this video. I believe they broke the story even before Capstone Report. They report that Missions uh, missions giving report shows them cooperating with the Southern Baptist Convention as recently as 2020. So we're supposed to believe, and let me show you a statement in response that the North American Mission Board made. Uh, and we're and this is what they want us to believe. We're supposed to believe this following statement. NAM, North American Mission Board, has always and will always endorse, only endorse, biblically qualified men as pastors. NAM is committed to the Baptist faith and message 2000, is complementarian by conviction, and does not endorse women as pastors. If an occasion occurs in which a church planter insists on maintaining a woman in a pastoral pastor role or title on staff, NAM will remove its endorsement and funding. When this issue first came up in February 2021, NAM conducted a review of its nearly 1,200 endorsed church planters, only six listed women with a title of pastor in a staff role. None were lead pastors. However, each of the six cases have been resolved. Questions about a specific church plant can be emailed to fyi at nam.net. Um, they expect you to believe that. Now, I wasn't born yesterday, and Tom Buck points out that this is not, February of 2021 is not the first time this issue came up. This is not the first time this issue came up. This has been going on for a long time. And, you know, if we want to go back to the Twitter sphere, Real quick, uh, Tom Buck, if want to go back to the Twitter sphere, Tom Buck So if we want to go back to the Twitter sphere, how do you communicate Christ in Silicon Valley? Mr. Ali Ruhi and Yasmin tell pastors how Center Set Church does it. So in March of 2018, it seems very clear that they are aware that Center Set Church was an egalitarian 
church, an egalitarian church. They were very upfront about this. She's been very upfront about being a pastor. She's not the one who's lying here. Uh, Yasmin Ruhi, that is. She's not the one who's lying, except on the pulpit, she's a blatant liar there. Uh, telling you that, you know, you are standing in the way of justice because you don't support the Black Lives Matter movement. She's a liar there. But, you know, she's not the one lying about how she doesn't support egalitarianism because she obviously does. The North American Mission Board is the one lying about this, and they've been lying for years. How many years? That is the question. Like I said early in the video, Kevin Ezel is the phantom menace. Uh, Al Mohler was certainly an enabler of Kevin Ezel, but you know, at the end of the day, he is wielding the money and he is wielding the personnel. That is how you drive that downgrade home. And that is what Kevin Ezel is, has done here. So that's all I got to say about that. My name is Ray. This is the Evangelical Dark Web. If you like this kind of content, subscribe to the channel. Even And also check out EvangelicalDarkWeb.org. Uh, big update on that. We have, I believe by the time this, web, this video is published, we would have undergone our site change and switched hosts. So... You know, check that check out that progress. Hopefully I'll do some sort of tutorial on that later on. Again, have a blessed day and have and I'll catch you on the next one.